Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week, as always, is... Bonjour, I'm Namio. Yes, and if you haven't listened to the other two podcasts that I've produced so far this week, you'll notice better microphone quality. Holy shit! <laughs> uh, yes, thanks to my cousin. Oh, so, um... So, yeah, before we get into uh, what's happened in the past week, how have you been, Namio? I've been great. How have you been? I have been working my ass off. (laughs) (coughs) And also getting over having stuff in my lungs. Ew. It's been getting steadily better, but if I laugh too much, it starts coughing. I'll try and knock out as many as I can, but there's bound to be one or two that'll get through. (laughs) So, uh, let's see. Where do we want to start with this particular week? (laughs) Oh, God. Um... Let's start with everybody sucks. Well, yeah, but what partic- um, you know, which particular ones? Oh my god. Okay, so Jordan and Anna have this conversation where Anna's like, "You don't need to be undercover anymore because we got Rick Lansing," and Jordan's kind of going, eh, "Maybe," but then. Julian shows up and is like, get, wa- get back to work, bitch. And, um, can, you know, he tells her, you know, Rick Lansing, he isn't actually my boss, I set him up. And so Jordan immediately tells Anna. Oh, yeah. And... Anna, at this point, comes up with the dumbest fucking plan in the universe. And the moment the plan started being enacted, I was calling it. Oh, me too. I'm like, no fucking way they're gonna kill Rick Lansing off screen. Come on. No. Not, Come on. Not a character like him who's been around. He's, I would say, nominally important, especially since he's Sonny's brother. So, uh, yeah, they're not gonna kill him off screen. I, I knew it, like, the moment that I saw the first person view of, of Nathan there saying, you ready to do this? Yeah. I'm like, they're gonna fake his death. They're faking it. And and while I while I was feeling the emotions of, of you know you know of uh, Molly and Elizabeth and everybody around their reactions to Rick supposedly dying, in the back of my mind I'm sitting here. There's this little Cartman-like voice saying, "He's faking," mm-hmm. because he was because he's got to go into witness protection. Otherwise, you know things will go tits up, and they don't want that. Which I I. I had to wonder if there would be, would have been another way. I mean, at the very least, he could have told Molly and Elizabeth. Okay, here's the thing, though. They should have let him go to trial. Mm-hmm. Because Diane very well could have gotten him off the hook. Yeah. She already had a defense planned. I mean, she could have done it, but they're like, you know, the only solution is to fake his death, you know give his family, like, this horrific trauma and shuffle him off somewhere else. I'm like, this is one of the dumbest plans Anna has come up with, and that is saying something. Yeah, it's like, I can understand the reasoning behind it, is to potentially protect Rick from whoever the real mob boss is. Because if the mob boss finds out, you know, that, that Rick is actually not dead, they could go after him. And that's understandable. There are just better ways to do it. And, and you know, maybe even just letting him go to trial and Diane getting him off, well, that, that, that might be able to do well enough. Rick beat yep. off scot-free, and, you know, the, the the guys behind the scenes be none the wiser. That Anna actually knows, thanks to Miss Jordan, that, yeah, Rick is not the real crime boss here. Well, and even even the, like even if you're worried about him getting convicted, bring Scott Baldwin in on it. Yeah, because even Scott, especially if somebody, if once he finds out who it is, if the if the fake Luke has not been revealed as whoever he's supposed to be yet, Scott will think it's Luke, 
those two over the years, they they've had like a bitter rivalry and enmity <laughs> going on. Yeah, yeah, they've worked together. They've had their enemy mind situations, but all in all, they kind of hate each other. Yeah. Uh, never mind the fact that Scott did save Luke from a bottomless pit, or not so bottomless pit, as Stavros found out. <laughs> but you know, hey. Oh lordy. <laughs> oh. Uh. So yeah, poor and and Elizabeth is just getting things one after another this week. I mean, yeah. she's got she's got Rick supposedly being killed, and and of course her thanks to Diane, her faith in Rick it was like restored right before he was supposedly killed. Yep. It's like because like, and I I love Diane because you know Elizabeth says you know I changed my mind I don't want you to represent Rick basically because I think he might be guilty. And Diane's basically like, shut your mouth, stop being stupid. Yes. <laughs> Diane is saying things that a lot of us were wanting to say in this case. Because look how quickly she bailed on AJ. Yeah. And Diane brought that up. Yeah. And I was like, go, Diane. I mean, you know, because really, I mean, come on, Elizabeth. She's she's ready to believe the worst at a moment's notice. I mean, yeah, very there's uh, skepticism, there's cynicism, and then there's Elizabeth Weber. Yeah, and it, the thing funny. is, AJ wasn't guilty either. Yeah, just like Rick isn't guilty. You know, not that the not that the law actually knows exactly who killed Connie, but in the court of law, he didn't do it, and of course, we all know he didn't do it. Exactly. Yeah, you know, we all know it was Ava, and Sonny, of course, taking the law into his own hands, decides, oh, you're pregnant with my child. Well, I'm going to lock you up in my house until you have that child, and once that child is out of your uterus, I'm going to fucking kill you. Yeah. Which, I, his rage, again, his rage is very justified. But this is, this is just, I think it's probably doing more damage than good at this point, the way he's going about it. Well, and I'm just like, like, my dad and I were sitting there watching this, and we're both like, as Morgan's coming in and whining and not believing a word Ava or Sonny or, and Sonny are saying, we're both sitting here going, tell him the truth! For the love of God, all of this could be fixed if you fuckers would just talk to each other. Yes. I mean, it's just... I mean, if I was doing a video version of this, I would immediately have that, that clip from Aladdin where Genie is like, tell her the truth! Yes. <laughs> and it's like, Morgan will understand. Morgan would likely be willing to help. Well, and the thing is, is later on, um, Duke and Sonny kind of have a heart-to-heart. -heart, and Duke is like, you know, I don't necessarily want to come back and work for you, but, you know, I can be your confidant. So why don't you just, you know... Phil, tell me what tell me what's going on with you. And uh, and Duke actually points out that you know Sonny could just tell Morgan the truth. And Sonny's like, well, if I tell Morgan the truth about Ava, first of all, it'll really hurt him because he really does care about her. And also, you know, Morgan, you know, she, Ava would immediately, um, excuse me, tell Morgan about Sonny killing AJ. And Morgan would immediately go to Michael because Morgan is stupid. Um, yeah. And so he's like, yo, I, even if this makes Morgan hate me forever, it's for, you know, his own good. It's for my family's own good that I'm going to keep this secret. And I'm like, I guess I kind of understand that logic. But at the same time, do you really think you can keep this under wraps forever? No, he won't be able to. I, I... Like... It's, there, there are very few things on, in soap operas in general, but especially on this show that if you have a secret, odds are it's going to come out within a year or five, depending on the secret. Yeah. I mean, of course. And, and it's going to come out at the most inconvenient possible time. Of course. Like Ava killing Connie. That was kept under wraps, at least from the other characters, for like, what, about a year? Yeah. So, so that came out. 
and of course, once Sunny found out, he went to the island, was going to kill her, and then she's like, oh, by the way, I have a bun in the oven. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, still, I'm still not happy that they pulled that out of their ass. It's like, really? Yeah. I don't know. I, I was like, I called it, so, and I'm like, of course. Of course she's pregnant. That's, you know. Yeah. That's the only way to ramp up the tension. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and, and I've seen people talking. It's like, well, what are they killing her? Well, she's on contract. Yeah, the actress is on contract. You can have her play a different role, you know. Yeah. You know, if you don't have to keep the character around, if the character's narrative is finished. I mean, well, look at what they did with uh, Michael Easton, who plays Silas. He played his twin brother, and also the. Uh, ah, I want to say what was his? Ah, the the cop guy that was originally on One Life to Live. He played both of them. When uh, when Michael Easton came back and started working on General Hospital, then uh, McBain, that's the cop's name, McBain. And the two of them, they, you know, Caleb uh, slash Stephen Clay was killed off, and then McBain had, was sent off somewhere else, but they kept the actor on, and now we have Silas. You know, and, and it's, it's not the first one they've done, done that to, and it's definitely not the first time in the show's history this has happened. Let's look at Tony Geary. He played Luke. He originated Luke when Luke was off for a while, but Tony Geary wanted to come back to the show. And, you know, not, not necessarily as Luke because they didn't have a good narrative reason for Luke to be back without Laura because at the time Jeannie Francis didn't want to come back, I think. So they put him in Bill Eckert, created a new role just for him and said, hey, he, he's just a look-like cousin of, his, of, of Luke there. And it worked. People remember Bill Eckert, mostly. I at least know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so it right. can be done. Just because you have a contract, you, just because you have an actor on contract, doesn't mean they have to stay in that character. They can play whatever character they want. Hell, technically Tony Geary is playing two different characters. He's playing Luke yeah. while he's in Miss Cabbage, and he's playing this asshole. We have no idea who the identity is. Fluke. I I, I do I do like that nickname. Uh. Yeah, or the fake fake, Luke. fakey Lukey. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> oh. Oh. Uh. But speaking of Luke, of course he's he's on his honeymoon. We get to see Luke in this, you know, fake Luke in this like like bikini, not bikini, but a tropical setup and. Yes. And just I guess he's trying to make the most of it. <laughs> you don't see <laughs> much of him, but that's you know, well, all he was really there to do is just you know badger Julian a little bit more. Yeah. And uh, say, you better added. stay in line. You better stay in line. I'll come after that hot daughter of yours. Yeah, and, uh, of course, I'm waiting for, uh, some of his covers to backfire, because when Tracy came in and was like, what are you doing on the phone? Mm -hmm. Uh, he's like, oh, my, my little nephew has a fever. I'm just talking to Lulu. And I'm sitting yeah. here going, um, so what's going to happen when Tracy asks Lulu about that? Yeah. That, 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 I gotta, that's gonna, we're gonna see that backfire. I hope so. Bit. Yes. Because um, he's been, he's been doing that a lot, co covering it, covering up his scheming by, uh, saying stuff about Lulu. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I'm just waiting for Tracy and Lulu to talk to each other. Yeah. Yeah, and then, that's gonna blow all the hell. <laughs> hmm. Oh, speaking of blowing things to hell, Maxi and Levi. Oh, God damn it, Levi. Oh, fuck Levi in the ear. I hate that character so much. And so, yeah, so what happened, it happens is uh, Maxi and Levi are doing yoga in the park. And uh, Maxi like is you. really not into it because she's thinking about, you know, the death of Patrick's baby. And <laughs> she uh, talks to uh, Levi about it, and he he gives this speech about how uh, it's all for the greater good. We just have to trust the universe. And Maxie's like, fuck that shit! <laughs> yeah. And he gets one hell of a what the fuck, dude? Yeah. It's like, dude! Okay, yeah, you might believe this universe, the universe has its own reasons and, and everything, but it's like, no. This, this makes no fucking sense. Yeah. 
I mean, granted, and, there is a reason, an in-universe reason, why the car was run off the road. And they I don't think they've stated it outright, but it's looking more and more like it was Rafe. Yeah, I was I was gonna mention that because yeah they uh, they pretty pretty heavily telegraphed that um, this week uh, with uh, the way he was acting, and I'm I'm betting that uh, it was an accident that happened because he was high. Probably. So nobody called out the hit. It's just well he was high on cocaine and and was being a dick. Yeah. Well, high on cocaine, just to be redundant. <laughs> or he was just, you know, out of it and just, it was an accident. Uh, yeah. But, just, uh... Oh, dear. And, of course, TJ sees him taking drugs and... Oh, that that happens. There's some back and forth going there and it's like, oh, shit. Grab your well, helmets and, and put them on. Well, and, uh... Because, uh... They start, you know, going after each other and, uh, you know, Rafe is like, yo, at least I'm just doing drugs instead of selling them like your mom. Yeah. And uh, TJ uh, comes back with, uh, well, you know, well, at least my mom's not a serial killer like your dad. And he's like, you know, basically like, you know, you're awful too. Uh, and he says something to the effect of, how long is it going to be before somebody innocent winds up dead because of you? Or so, something something to that effect. And then, uh, you know, that's what really sets Rafe off. And, you know, he punches TJ. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, later when he's when Rafe is talking to Sam and he finds out that the baby died. Yeah. Like, he, he is fucking devastated. And he, you know, he keeps, like... Uh, kind of hearing um, in his head the sound of the car, the car crash. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, they're pretty well telegraphing that it was, it was Rafe. Yeah, and, and Sam, who is now hell-bent on finding whoever caused the crash, she's going to be shocked and disappointed. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe shocked. Definitely disappointed. Definitely yeah. disappointed. I rented this. Yeah, one. it, it was really sweet of her to offer to do that for Patrick, though, because, uh, you know, Patrick is going nuts. Uh, and I I do like that um, he told Emma about her brother's death off screen because I think it would have been a very difficult scene for the actress who plays Emma to pull off. Yeah, it would have been difficult for any kid actor, honestly. Yeah. So I'm I'm glad I'm glad they did that off screen, um, but you know, Patrick is uh, talking to Sam, and she's like, you know, um, the the thing that helped me when this happened to me were you know uh, one of the things that helped me were were Jason and my anger, mm-hmm. and you know Patrick's like I the only person i can be angry with is the person who ran us off the road that night uh but you know the port charles police department uh has too much on their plate uh and also they suck uh yeah. he didn't say that i said that um <coughs> and yeah. you know he has basically he's like there's there's no chance that they're gonna find who did this and so sam's like you know what fuck it i'll find them yeah. <laughs> And, of course, Patrick's like, no, 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 no. And Sam's like, I insist. I'm going to go find the bastard. Oh, and there was a a line from Patrick. He says, you know, you are such a good friend to me and uh, more of a friend than I've been to you lately. And it flashes back to Patrick demanding that Robin um, abandon Jason Mm -hmm. and come home. And I was like, oh, damn. Uh yeah, because cause it's like because uh, Patrick, on the one hand, he does feel that resentment, but on the other hand, that's the the, the husband of one of his good friends. Yeah. So it's like, of, of course, he's gonna feel guilty and a little bad. In the universe, though, I do think it is super shitty that Robin is not coming to the baby's funeral. Yeah, like, that is. That is that is super shitty, and uh, you know I know the reason you know is that is because you know Kimberly McCullough has shit to do, 
But like in in universe, it's like you know what? You can take a fucking afternoon off and go support your husband. Yeah, and, and, and I'm willing to bet. Times of his life. I'm willing to bet Victor Cassidine would be more than willing to say, "Hey, you know what? Funeral, be there for your husband." Except for the fact that the last time they talked, he pretty much broke it off. Yeah. So with that, he Victor may not have even thought about it. Who knows? Because who knows what he's got on his plate right now? Because hi, head of the WSB. Yeah. Because I'm sure he's, you know, in, as, in addition to whatever nefarious things he is bringing his family back for, I'm sure there are some things here he is doing that are actually doing good with the WSB. They're supposed to be one of the big goods anyway. Supposed to be. But that's been debatable for years. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So yeah, but but. Again, I was I was mentioning uh, things kept hating Elizabeth over and over and over again, and and of course going down to see Rick, she had to take some time off of work, and oh, she comes back. Obrecht starts just laying into her. Elizabeth just snaps and says, "You know what? I had to take care of some shit. Somebody died," and Obrecht is just not letting up, and eventually, Obrecht fires her. Yeah. And Elizabeth is like, "What? What? What? The fuck? What? What?" what? And and to be fair, Elizabeth was pretty much just calling her bluff, and it was not a bluff. No. Obrecht does not bluff. I was going to say, she should have known it wasn't a bluff, because, yeah, Obrecht, you know, she says exactly what she means. Mm-hmm. And if she says she's going to fire you, she's going to fire you. Yep, and, pretty much. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, there was that... Um, Oh, uh, after um, uh, so 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 part of the the stupid Rick plot was they uh, <laughs> they staged this thing, and again this is really fucking stupid. But they staged this thing where they say that Rick tried to grab Nathan's gun uh, when Nathan was going to take him to the arraignment, and they struggled, and Rick wound up shot. And so Nathan is really not happy about this. And then his name gets plastered all over the TV. Yeah. Now, he had just kind of uh, run into Maxie at the park after she had that argument with uh, Levi. And he asked her to come with him to the floating rib and have a drink. And she's like, sure, why not? And uh... (laughs) And not only do they share drinks. She finds out exactly why his day was bad. Yeah, and she then, sees it on the TV, and she's like, damn. And then she eats his meat. Yeah. <laughs> Quite <clearly, coughs> true. Yes. You know, Nathan, Nathan was uh, trying to basically uh, play the tempter there, because he got this like huge plate of ribs, and he offered some to her. Yeah. And uh, she's like, no, 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 that's fine. And then she kept looking at it, and then finally she's like, are you going to eat those all by yourself? And he's <laughs> like, have at it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and she's like, just don't tell Levi. And he's like, oh, my lips are sealed. And she's like, you know what, on second thought, tell him whatever you want. These are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and, and, you know, and they're sitting there talking, and, you know, she tells Nathan how she was feeling about, you know, Patrick's baby, and uh, he just says, you know, I'm so sorry. And she's like, see, was that so hard? <laughs> yeah. It's really, really... You know, why couldn't, why can't Levi just have, you know, the sense to just just say that one thing? Just that one thing. But no, <sighs> Levi's got to wax this philosophical and spiritual and is like, the universe has its own priorities, it has its own it has its own ways, it has its own plans, and right now the universe can just take a stick up its ass. Yep. Oh, god damn. Because, as, you know, I'll, I'll be glad when Levi gets his comeuppance in some way, shape, or form. Yes. I mean, I wouldn't mind, I'll, I, I, would li- I would like the character more if he stopped being such a douche canoe. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, that pretty much is his character. Yeah, unfortunately. But, as we've learned with Brit, characterization can change. Yes. 
Yeah, so, speaking of characterizations changing and Brit, hi! <laughs> yeah, it's not much happened to her this week. You know, of course, she's she's not happy with Nicholas and Elizabeth having their tender moments and and everything. And and Brad is sitting there, at, you know, telling her, you know what, go after him, go fight for him, go fight for him. And she's like, no, he's he's done. You know, we need to not do this. Yeah, she he keeps telling her to uh, um. Bring back you know, the bridge. Bring back the bridge. And it's like, uh, that was not a very positive time in her life. Yeah, and, and, and she realizes, she's like, the fuck? She's like, no. It's just, no. I mean, no, that, no. And no. then, uh, and then what happens is, um, she and Brad are, uh, I think they were at the floating rib, and, uh, Nicholas just happens to show up there and actually talks to Brit Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, he he extends his condolences for the baby because, you know, uh, Gabriel was in Brit's care. Yes. And And also they, they had a little conversation and he mentions that he does not hate her. Yes. And she's like, it's a start. And, and I gotta say, Brit, when when she gets you know the emotional and more open like that, she is adorable. She is, and then, and then because she sa- sees like this glimmer of a window where she might be able to get him back, she does the dumbest fucking thing she possibly can, and asks her mother for help. Yeah, you, you remember the last time you asked your mother for help? I know, and I'm like, your mother knows. Fuck all about relationships. Have like you have even thrown that in her face a couple of times. Your yeah. mother is the worst possible person you could go to for help. The last time you asked your mother for help about getting a man back, she had you steal an embryo and pretty much destroyed your life. The Asking your mother for help in the first place is how you ended up in this mess. Stop being stupid. Yeah. Just, just, Brit, no. Brit, stop. 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 Oh, god damn. So, but speaking speaking of, of, of don't and stop, with, in which, I mean, uh, neither of those apply to what we're talking about next. Uh, Nina. She's still up and about, still kind of naive, still catching up on things. And there was the joyous reunion between her and Nathan, who Sam was able to tell Nathan that, yeah, she's alive. She came and saw us in the park. Yeah. And it's just, boom, there we go. And, and he finally goes to see her. They catch up, and he tells her everything that's happened. And we also find out that Madeline decided, you know, Madeline faked, you know, Victor and Nina's death so she could get the money. And now all of those assets are frozen. Yeah. Because Madeline is awaiting trial, which means uh, Nina has no money to pay for her own medical care. Right. But Nina, Nina is in good hands because Silas, you know, he's he comes in after, you know, Nina and Nathan have their talk and finding out that they're actually cousins and not, you know, biologically cousins. And not biological siblings, although they still hold the same, you know, they hold yeah. the siblings moniker because, hey, why not? You know, because they're just that special to one another, mm-hmm. which is a good thing. I like, I approve of that. And then uh, Silas comes in and he pretty much tells her, yeah, I'm kind of dating Sam now. Yeah. And first Nina is like, I am so stupid. And, and it's like, no, no. And even Silas is like, no, no. Yeah. It just happened, you know? And then Nina finally understands, okay, you know what? Been in a coma for 20 years. You thought I was dead. Of course you'd move on. Duh. Yeah. And so, and, you know, she, she, she goes through kind of a, a range of emotions. One of the sadder ones <coughs> is, uh, you know, Nathan told her that Madeline was the one who put her in the coma, mm-hmm. which, uh, you know, Nina apparently hadn't known. Yeah. And, um, you know... And Nina says, you know, it's all my fault for telling Madeline in the first place that she was pregnant. Yeah. 
And I'm it's like, like, no, honey. And no. everyone's like, no, no. <laughs> that that is not your fault. You know, you you know, and she she says, you know, I I knew she would, you know, do something and I'm sitting here going, I don't think you should have known that she would try to fucking kill your baby. I I really don't think that's something that you could have reasonably anticipated. No, not reasonably. E- even from somebody like like Madeline West or or whatever the hell her last name is, and you know it, it's not a reasonable thing. It just isn't. No. You know I don't even think you would. Re- I don't even think you could reasonably expect that from Obrecht. No. Because because uh, because giving give Obrecht some credit. If you're pregnant with a child that you know is from a father you don't want her to have a sex life with or what have you or any kind of relationship well she'd probably just kill the guy and keep the baby but yeah but she wouldn't uh, try and kill the baby yeah oh just yeah crazy people all, all dumbness um <laughs> Oh my god, so... <laughs> and, yeah, and Nina actually tries to be like, I'll move out, and Silas is like, no, stay here, I will take care of you. You know, just because I'm love of Sam doesn't mean that you have to leave. It's, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Calm down. Uh... <laughs> and, and then, of course, he's going to have to tell Sam, and, and they're going to have to work through all that, but it, it's, you know, for the time being, I mean, it's like, it does make the most sense. Because yeah. Silas has the space, obviously. There's enough space for him and Kiki and Rafe to be there. Yes. And so, of course, and if he sleeps on the couch, you know, no big deal. Exactly. So and, there's yeah. room. It'll be fine. <laughs> Unlike in Nathan's apartment where he shares it with Maxie and, and Levi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh. And and of course to get back to to the uh, baby in, in the upcoming funeral, Sabrina, poor Sabrina. Like you know, and you know what? In the aftermath of something like this, uh, I think she's entitled to a mental breakdown. But like she has like kind of a psychotic break, um, and uh, you know. She's you know, Felix comes home and Sabrina's sitting there writing out thank you cards, and he's like, huh? And she's like, you know, this is the only thing keeping me sane right now. Could you go by the church and you know make sure that everything is perfect for tomorrow? And Felix is sitting here going, that doesn't make any sense, but okay. And instead, he goes to Patrick and is like, uh, Sabrina needs you. I don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the thank you cards, I can sort of see, I mean, not only just being, you know, keeping yourself sane, but, you know, if people send gifts, a thank you card, that would that is polite. I mean, even if you'll not be able to use them, it's like, thanks anyway, um... You know, we'll make yeah. sure they're put to a good use or or, or what have you or, or whatever we want to do. I don't know what the etiquette would be there. I honestly don't. But at I the very least know. at the very least saying thank you is is, is you know, something. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Pat, and then Patrick so Patrick goes over to see what's wrong and he comes in and Sabrina's in her wedding dress. And it's like ah uh, Because she thinks that she's getting married to Patrick tomorrow. And that the last several months totally haven't happened. It was like, yeah, and and Patrick just basically takes her and and gently but firmly slaps her with some truth. Yeah. That hurts him as much as it hurts her because, well, yeah, it's his baby too. Yeah. So yeah, and and that and it looked like the, you know she was finally releasing everything and it was getting through. Uh, so. So hopefully things will be a little bit better for her, you know, comparatively speaking, of course. Yeah. You know, over the next week. Um, and Felix, of course, he's, he's dealing with this kind of stuff, too. I mean, his best friend is going through this. He, there's not much he feels he can do. And he, he's lamenting outside the hospital, you know, and he's basically, you know, just, just feeling bad. And out comes Lucas. 
to just sit and you know just stand and just talk with him and, and comfort him and everything. And he mentions his sister, well, step half sister uh, BJ, who is who was in a car accident. Uh, well, technically she was on the school bus coming home, and some drunk driver hit them, and she ended up becoming a vegetable, basically. Oh wow! Um, she was, I, th- I think she was brain dead. And That's yeah, and what he, what the the rest of the story he didn't tell is uh, it's actually one of the most well known stories from the nineties. Is uh, at the same time Maxie, you know she she's had her heart problem and and you know over the past year we've known this and and uh, so she needed a heart transplant like pronto otherwise Maxie was going to die. BJ was already brain dead and she was a match. For the heart, so the you know Tony Jones, who is who is her uh, father, he, he had to make the decision to 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 whether or not to uh, keep BJ in life support and sacrifice Maxie or what have you, you know. And in the end, the heart went over to Maxie, and the sur- surgery was a success. But just the emotion and everything running through it from both from Tony, from Bobby, from Felicia. All the characters that were involved. It was really, really well written and well performed um, arc there, mm-hmm. and that's where that's the one that Lucas is referring to there when he's talking about BJ and and his little sister. And of course, he and Felix bond over that. And meanwhile, Brad is also getting up the gumption to go after, you know, to go after Lucas himself, or or was it Felix? Uh, Lucas. Yeah, it was Lucas. I keep forgetting which one he's supposed to be going after. <laughs> no, he's he's pretty much given up on Felix, and uh, he's like, "No, Lucas, I like you. I like you." Yeah, it's like, dude, you you went from you went from from a skeevy cad to this this guy that really just want to smack in the face with a boot. So it's like. You know, find an in-between, please. I know you like him, but calm the fuck down. And I know Brad didn't understand what was going on at the time, but once he realized what the hell was happening, he could he could, should have just put everything else that he might have had to say aside and comfort Felix a little bit more than what he did. Yeah. And, of course, Lucas tore into him over it because it's like, dude, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Yeah, so so Brad is stinging a little bit from that, <clears throat> which is of, – of course he is. Of course he's going to sting a little bit from that because I, I don't think – I don't know many people who wouldn't be stinging from that. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, like I said, called the whole Rick being you know the fake death thing for Rick, and it was almost blown right off the bat because Molly is insisting on seeing Rick, you know – from in the body bag, I guess just kind of confirm, say goodbye or what have you, you know, whatever, whatever comfort or what or all that. And and of course Anna is sitting there having to be like, yeah, I, I can't, I can't let her do that because obviously she can't know Rick is alive. So they come yeah. up with this whole thing like, yeah, it was pretty messy, uh, you know, his 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 whole thing about you know being shot. I think. The way I'm seeing it is he was like shot twice in the face or what have you and messed up his face pretty bad. And of course Molly, you know, the last memory that Molly has of him shouldn't be something like that. And I can agree with that. You know, you know, if if it was an actual situation and Rick was actually dead by gunshot to the face, yeah, I I, I don't think I would I don't think he would want Molly to see her that way. And yeah. I don't know many people who would want to see that. It's just no, thank you, no, 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 no. It's bad enough. She thinks her father is dead. We don't need to see him looking like a piece of hamburger. And poor Rick, it was so hard for him. He's sitting there. You can tell <sighs> he wants to go out there and just give her a big hug and say, "Look, I'm okay. I'm going to be taken yeah. care of." But he can't, and he knows it. And to sneak him out of the hospital, they just put him in 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 scrubs, and I think they put a mask over his face. Or yeah, they? yeah, they did. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Ed had him put on uh, a mask, and I'm like, yeah, that's... yeah. Be- 
because nobody can tell what he looks like through his eyes, especially Alexis yeah. or Molly, right? Uh, and one of them, I try, kind of kind of forgetting which one actually did, but as he was walking out to the car, it was like one of them kind of felt somebody was there. And, yeah, that was Elizabeth. That was okay. That was Elizabeth. That's right. Oh, and of course, after she got fired, so who knows what's gonna happen now? Yeah, with her shit. Well, and the thing is, is I was thinking about it, and I'm like, okay, you know what, Britt? If you really want to, you know, get on Nicholas's good side, the first thing that she could do is ask her mother to reinstate Elizabeth and have her mother make sure that Elizabeth knows it was Britt who went, yeah. you know, went to bat for her. Like, that that would be the smartest first move she could make because, you know... She's trying to prove to Nicholas that she's not this horrible person. Yeah. There you go. You know, you know, you know, bury the hatchet and, you know, do something for one of his closest friends. Yes. And there you go. That would, that would get, in, get on his good side. Hey, he, he, you, well, okay, I don't think he would be going that fast, but he might even give you some booty. Who knows? Probably not that fast, like I said. But it would be nice. But at the very least, come over to Windermere. See see little Spencer. I know Spencer would enjoy it. Yes. Oh. But yeah, I think I think we've uh, covered pretty much everything, haven't we? Oh. Um, uh, does... That's everything that I can think of. Yeah. So so we have a little bit of we're not ending the show, you know, this early. We've still got plenty of time. So I actually wanted to take some time and actually talk about one of the characters that's on, been on the show for a while. Um, and since since her family has been a part of the story for this week, both in the case of Molly and Rick and Nicholas, well, you know, and, and, and admittedly I'm kind of pulling this out of my ass, so this, this first thing is definitely going to be seat of the pants, probably a little bumpy here and there. But uh, we're going to talk about Alexis. A little bit. Okay. And her history in the show and, and how she was introduced. Um, for those who don't already know, if this is like your first show or if you're just starting to get into General Hospital or whatever, then uh, Alexis Davis is the daughter of Mikos Kassadine, who was one of the guys who tried to freeze the world back in the 80s. You know, and she was – she is not Helena's daughter though. She is actually – she is a uh, – they say illegitimate child. Of uh, Mikos and an opera singer, I think her name, I think the opera singer is Kristen Bergman, who I don't think she ever appeared on the show, as far as I know. But but Alexis and her younger sister uh, Christina were both, you know, had both been uh, born by this Kristen Bergman, both because Mikos couldn't keep it in his pants. And once Helena found out, Alexis, at the time, you know, she realized what was going on. And she hid Christina in, I think, a stall or whatever. And by the time she went back to go get her, somebody had run off with her. And once you know uh, the opera singer was dead, you know, by by way of slit throat, by the way, which is very, very much stated in the series by Helena, and Helena seemed to enjoy it, either enjoy it or or feel very, very uh, righteous about it. It's hard to tell which one. But anyway. Alexis was raised – she was born Natasha Cassidyne. Her first name is actually Natasha. In fact, according to the wiki, it's uh, Princess Natasha Alexandra Mikosov, Mikosov, Mikosovna Cassidyne. Just – oi. That's – you fucking Cassidines in your long goddamn names. Yeah. And, and of course, since you know at that time there was also Stefan and Stavros – she was, for whatever reason, brought to live with them as as a distant cousin, hence uh, Alexis uh, Davidovich, which, of course, when she came over to the States, she shortened it to Davis. And you know, she grew up with them and, and, and everything, and then in the mid-90s is when the Cassadines first started coming back to the show more often. Well, I say more often, but at all, with Stefan and Nicholas making their introduction and Alexis coming not soon after. And she's... You know, she's definitely you know she's a lawyer. She's always been a lawyer, 
and she helped take care of like Cassanine Industries stuff at the time. And eventually, it's found out. You know, her past is found out. And at one point, it thought that uh, another character, uh, Catherine Bell, that Stefan had been getting involved with at the time, was actually Natasha. But thanks to Luke doing a little bit of digging around, turns out no, Catherine Bell is not Natasha. That's actually Alexis. Which is really good because, from what I'm understanding, there were some scenes between the two of them that were, yeah, they, 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 in hindsight, might have been a little incesty. It's a little too uncomfortably incesty. <laughs> <laughs> but she does eventually, you know, find herself a mate in Ned Ashton, which, which explains why, you know, a few weeks ago when Ned was walking around and he ran into Alexis, that explains a lot of the history that they have because they were together for a while. And I remember one – it was actually about the time I was getting into General Hospital. The two of them were together. And I remember seeing websites dedicated to that particular pairing because <laughs> it was <laughs> – because it's just boom, you know? And – but but at one point, I don't remember exactly why they ended up doing this. And – oh, okay. I'm uh, reading it right here. Um, she ended up marrying Jax, as in the same Jax that is Carly's ex-husband. And uh, it was part of a plan to help her best friend at the time, Chloe Morgan, who, by the way, was also a Quartermain. <laughs> a distant Quartermain cousin, but but uh, still a Quartermain. And she, she wanted to help Chloe save her company. Although Chloe ends up, ends, up, ends up losing it, I don't remember much of the details. And she and Jack's divorce, and then she and Ned said to get married – and then she leaves Ned at the altar because he thinks he can do better than her. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and and over time, and again, this is still around the time I'm watching, she eventually does become a mob boss, not, not mob boss, but a lawyer for uh, Sonny, now that he's got the territory and he's got the more power. And, and, and of course, some of the stuff is custody disputes, like with Michael, for example. Um and and at this point, you know, she does fall prey to Sonny being, you know, unable to keep it in his pants. Yeah. And she gets pregnant, and boom, you have Christina, named after her younger sister, who at one point I think, I think she had found out something. I don't remember exactly what she found out. Ah, uh, god damn. Uh, I'm trying to look it up here, but I'm not seeing it right here, but. But her sister found out something. Maybe it might, it might have had to do with something about uh, the whole Ned and Jax and Chloe thing. And she was going to go tell Sonny. No, I remember what it was now. It was the fact that when when uh, Alexis was pregnant, she was passing the baby off as Ned's, and and she, you know, Christina found out that the baby's actually Sonny's, and she was going to go tell Sonny, but she walked in at the wrong time and she got blowed up. Oh. At least, not not like completely blowed up, but blowed up enough to where they could get her to a hospital, and she had some last words, and she ended up dying. And so in yeah. honor of her sister, she named her firstborn Christina. Oh, and yeah, and of course, oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. <laughs> and, and now, and to get it a little bit more into, over the years, a um, little bit, a little bit. Oh, God. Like I said, this is kind of seat of the pants here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but on this on this wiki, they do have, like, a list of, like, crimes committed because everybody's got to have at least one, I'm sure. You know, you probably could go over to Rafe's uh, entry and you see a few of them. Not, not the least of which is uh, doing drugs and running somebody off the road mm, while on drugs. Uh, but among among the stuff that she has done in far, as far as crimes committed, uh, let's see, attempted murder. Help, oh, that's right. At one point, they were wanting to take out Helena because, hi, bitch is a danger to everybody. And she and Luke loosened a railing on a parapet at Windermere. And this is the story of Catherine Bell when Obrecht was there talking to Brad about it. So they loosened the thing and... They tried to get Helena to fall off of there, but it ended up being Catherine, unfortunately. Oh, and yeah. So there, there are some other things. Like, they have slapped as crimes on this thing. 
It was like, okay. slapping is a crime. Okay. And, and they note that she slapped Sonny, Carly, Ned. I was like, dear. Uh. And at one point, she also uh, was in possession of medical marijuana. Because I believe she actually had, in fact, it says down here, she had a uh, stage two lung cancer at one point. Oh, that's no fun. Yeah, so obviously she survived it, and she had the medical marijuana. Yay. Yay. Of course, she was busted for because it's still New York, and everybody is like, Pot's buying! Yeah. Uh. Oh, yeah. And some of the other things that she's done, um, let's see. Molly was actually given birth via C-section in the middle of a train wreck. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So that, that, that would have been fun. Um, let's see, what else? And of course, as we all ended up finding out over the past year, you know, at some point while Alexis was at boarding school, she met up with Julian Jerome, and she lost her virginity in the backseat of his car. And yeah. Sam was the result. I, you know, and they, it's kind of frustrating the way that they um, framed that whole incident, because I'm like, um, technically what happened to her was was rape. Yeah. Uh, it was it was statutory rape. Mm -hmm. And it was also date rape because she got super drunk mm -hmm. and a much older man took her into his car and had sex with her when she was too drunk to even remember his face or his name. Yeah. And like they just they keep presenting that as just a, a youthful mistake that she made, and I'm like, no, she was she was raped. Yeah, Julian, Julian raped her, and like, he doesn't even think of it that way either. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I don't know. It, it, it bugs me. That uh, that is, you know, you think back on it and it's like, yeah, that is a bit of a that is buggy, very buggy. Yeah. No, honey, no. That, 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 that's no. It's like, sorry, but technically that is rape. Yeah. I mean, and, and who knows? Maybe Alexis now is at the point where she's like, you know what? I don't care. It happened. It's in the past. I've dealt with it. And, and you know, we're, we're, you know, we're all past that. Yeah. You know, and, and if that's the case, then you know what? Good on her. You know, any, any victim who, of, of any kind of heinous, uh, thing, if whether you're a character or whether you're a real person or whatever, if you're able to get past it to the point to where to where you look back on it and be like, okay, that happened, it's not really affecting me in a negative way, then more power to you, honestly. You know, I mean, especially as long as you realize what happened was what it was. Like in this case, as long as and and I don't know if I don't think they've explored this particular point yet, but. But say for the sake of argument, Alexis realizes, okay, that was technically rape. As long as you, re as long as you realize what happened, and and are able to come to terms with that and move on, you know. And again, and it's one of those things where it is going to be easier said than done, especially in reality. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying otherwise. <laughs> but but if you're able to do that and get on and do things and look back on it and be like, okay, that happened. That was horrible, but I'm okay now. I have come to terms with that. Then, good. You know, yeah. more more power to you. I, I really, I really do have to respect somebody who does that. Oh lordy. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Again, lungs are, are being a little bit of a thing, and so if I laugh too much, they they try to come up, which is not cool. Not cool at all. Uh, Poor Gomer. Yes. But, yeah. And uh, and she was also one of those that was po that could have possibly been infected by that water pathogen thing that Jerry Jacks had introduced a couple of years ago. You know, that he held the town ransom for just so he could get some polonium poisoning cure. And uh, sexier, she was uh, injected with an unknown substance that caused her to spike an extremely high fever. But it was re revealed to be some an inoculation against the dangerous pathogen. That, that Jerry would – okay, he would later release into the water supply. So she's basically – it's basically like, what you inject me with? You'll find out. 
And then, poison, poison, poison. And she's like, wait, I'm fine. Yeah, that's because I injected you with shit that would keep it from getting to you. Okay. It doesn't say who did it. I, I, I you could probably look at the actual entry itself. But, uh, but yeah, so that is not everything. It's not every little thing because if I, if I read word for word everything on the wiki page, we'd be here <laughs> for another hour. Yeah. But that's a bare bones thing. Uh, combining a little bit with the wiki and a, a little bit with my own memories as well about Alexis Davis. Um, if you guys like that, um, you know what? We'll we'll do it. I would love I would love to bring on some of the actors that have played these characters, and so they can talk about it and have, make like a segment out of it. But but uh, of course, you know they're going to be difficult to get a hold of. <laughs> yeah. But you know, no, no, no harm in trying. Indeed. But yeah, and again, like I said, it was kind of seat of my pants, pulled it out of my ass. I admit it's filler, but sometimes, some weeks you're going to have that, you know, just like any, any kind of podcast here. So with that, we are going to go ahead and get out of here because uh, I know I'm probably going to ramble when I do my, my stuff. <laughs> so uh, where can we find you, Namio? You can find me on Tumblr, uh, Namio's Corner. You can find me on Twitter uh, at, at Naomi Washburn. And you can find me on the fabulous rtgomer.com. Yay! And you can find me on Etsy at Namio Stained Glass. Sweet! And you can find me on rtgomer.com. You can find me on nerdvice.com. You can find me on the social media at gomer21xx. That's on Twitter and on Tumblr, of course. Um, of course, the, this show also has its own Tumblr as well, as well as my other podcasts. I keep forgetting to bring them up on my other shows as well. <laughs> uh, but you know they all have their own individual Tumblr pages as well, with everything that's that's going on kept up, you know, as well as need be. <laughs> because I rent this tongue, I swear. Um, you can also find if if you like the shows that I do and you want to help support it for like things like new equipment or equipment upkeep and all of that stuff, and you just or if you just simply want to toss money. Then uh, and be like these cool people. If you're watching it on YouTube, you're gonna see their names on the screen. If you want to be like these cool people and toss money at me, then head on over to Patreon.com/Gomer21XX. Uh, just revamped everything again. Um, got different different things set up. Consolidated a few things. Make it make it a little bit easier to understand. I hope <laughs> a little bit more straightforward. And and again, any even just one dollar. Is appreciated. Uh, it, you know, it, it can go a long way. And, and hell, in fact, it's already gotten me a few kind of more minor uh, upgrades as far as my uh, hardware goes, and even some software. So it's it's not all for nothing. It does go back into different productions that I do. Um, and because I would be a horrible boyfriend if I did not do this. Uh, my girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, if you look around my site and some of my other videos, you can see some of her fabulous artwork, uh, her title card artwork and everything. Uh, she also has her own Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash Becky Hop. So if you go over there and you were to toss money at her, she could do a little artwork for you. And if you throw enough money at her, she will do a 30-second animation for you. Yes, for enough money you will be able to get a 30-second animation from an award-winning animator. Woo! Fuck yeah. I, I, think that, I think that is a good thing. I might go toss money at her right now for the animation. <laughs> so, so yes. So, again, that is patreon.com slash Hop. And with that, that is going to be the end of the show. Thank you guys for listening and putting up with my rambling during the last part of the show. Uh, if you like, if you like me going over different characters and their backstories and their histories on the show or what have you, then uh, let me know, and I will actually maybe have one better prepared for next time. We'll see what happens. Um, so again, thank you guys for listening, and until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio. Signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.